Take this and we're going to do an edit in. Uh, open a smart object in Photoshop. All right. And what we're going to do here is kind of take it to that next step where we're, it's a little bit more um, in depth and detailed, where we're going to kind of pay more attention to the texture of skin and kind of do like a little bit of a high fashion retouch on this, maybe a little bit more burning and dodging. Um, so, what we have again, our smart object is a raw file inside Photoshop. Do you guys remember what we have to do in order to copy a smart object? and not make it affect the previous smart object, what do we have to do? Yeah, so we wanna make a, a copy, a, a new smart object via copy, right? So that way we don't use the original one. Now with this one, what I'm gonna do, and this is gonna be a little bit of a retouching thing here, we had already did our um, kind of established corrections with, uh, our basic panel and whatnot. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna use this to kind of create a smoother skin tone. So if we go to clarity right here, let's see what happens when we start to drop this down. Because remember, texture, clarity, and dehaze, they really do affect the way we see people um, in a photograph as far as their skin tone and their skin, not even tone, but the skin texture, because that's what we use for um, sharpness, right? So we did this right quick, and I'm gonna hit okay. And all I did was just lighten up the tones. Now it went universally over the whole thing, but that's all right, because what we're gonna do is we're gonna put this out as a layer mask, right? So I'm gonna do a layer mask here and I'm gonna hold down option because it's gonna open up the layer mask. If I were just to press this right now, it would just be a white layer mask, but I don't want a white layer mask. I want an all black one. So I'm gonna hold down option and click add layer mask. And I got a black layer mask there. So now I can go in with my brush tool, the B button, and I've got a black uh, foreground. So I'm gonna hit the X button to swap it to white. I'm gonna zoom in here by holding space bar and command and then sliding it over. What I'm gonna do is draw in, essentially, my smoothed out texture from my other smart object. Now what you're gonna see is that the tones of the skin aren't really changing that much. You're just getting rid of a lot of those highlights in there and shadows that are in there that are from uh, the previous edit of Clarity which we do want on like the clothes and the eyes and the um, hair. We want to see those things, the lips. We want to see that kind of texture in there. But maybe we don't want to see it everywhere. And if this is too much, the way we, I'll show you how we can go back and get rid of this. Because you got to keep in mind, um, let's see, option and control will shrink the brush down if we go side to side. What we want to keep in mind is that we don't want this to be too much like of a high fashion thing. Um, but what we really want to do is have the ability to always go back and change our minds. Because I can tell you that is a huge part of retouching. One day you feel like it's good. The next day you're like, oh, what was I thinking? I had too much coffee or whatever it may be. Or even if you have a person who's like, yeah, I like it, but, you know, in this, in this case, the but comes in and so we know maybe this is a little bit too smooth. So I got a couple things. I could actually take the opacity, drop it down, and I can see a little bit, this is all the way through and this is a little bit through. Or I could just go right back in to my smart object and I can make changes to my clarity and uh, to my texture, dehaze, anything that I might have done before, all right? So I'll zoom in here, take a look, say, all right, clarity goes up a little bit, hit OK. So now I've got that happening, and it's going to kind of land right in between the two. Boom, there it goes. So what we didn't do, and I don't know if you guys noticed, let's take a look at this layer mask. Hold on, Option, click on that. We essentially created a mask. We're not affecting the, the lips, the eyes too much. 
the nose we are but we want to get the edges of the faces too the reason we do that is because those are things those are like the markers that we use as humans to identify other humans does that make sense so we want to keep those sharp the skin tone itself doesn't have to be that way we can also do that some of that down here because remember this was universally done here so we could come right in and soften this all up a little bit we can still keep some of that really nice contrast that we created with the, the um, with our adjustment brush but now we can come through and we can really make it look like nicely retouched in this way all right And again, because it's an adjustment brush, rather than using, you know, white or black, we can come right through here and we can use a 50% gray and we can essentially do, um, a, you know, different opacities of change right here. And that's all just because it is a layer mask. So I'm going to go back into white and I'm going to try and get a stronger brush here. Because, what you know, what happens too, sometimes you make pictures of people I mean, what if it's cold, right? It's cold, you're gonna get goosebumps, you know? Um, if you wanna get rid of any textures that are natural to people, you know, stretch marks, any of these things, they're there, I can still see them, but they're not as apparent. And that's what we want to avoid. Well, especially when we do this kind of high fashion. I wouldn't even call this high fashion, I would just call this more of like a attentive retouching. Let's say I wanna get some more of that texture back in the beard, all I have to do is come back up here to black, shrink my brush down a little bit, and then brush right over the top there. So now I got a little bit of that. I can get a little pencil thin back in. You know what I mean? And if I really wanted to, I can zoom in even closer. I could pay even more attention to the areas that I want to, to avoid. And just highlight that pencil thin. All right. So now you can see he's looking shiny. All right, glowing even. So that is, um, on, there, on your screen is really saturated, but over here, uh, I like the skin tones. It looks pretty good here. Um, one thing, now that we've done that, you can see this is our layer mask right here. Another thing I'll do is maybe go in with a burn and dodge. And I can do that in multiple ways. We've discussed them before. Um, one of them is, um, and one of them we haven't really discussed that much is just creating a new layer and then going over to quite literally um, this right here this little magnifying glass looking thing it's called a dodge tool underneath that is something called the burn tool if you hover over it it tells you what it does a burn tool darkens areas a dodge tool dodges areas this is a very specific way that if used in the right way will definitely look really good um, so if you look at the top here, it says range, midtones. If we click on that, it says shadows and highlights. And exposure is 50%. So what this is doing is it's saying, okay, if you brush on this area and it's a midtone, we're going to drop it 50%. We're going to make it 50% darker than it is. If it's a shadow, we'll do that. But what that also means is if you click on shadow, it's not going to affect the midtones or the highlights. Well, in this hair, mostly, mostly everything is shadow. So what we'll do is we'll try and make this a slightly bigger brush. And what you'll see is the darker parts are going to get darker. As you, let's see. Oh, you know what? I don't know if that's going to work on this one. Nope, it's not going to work there. So the reason um, it doesn't necessarily, let me go soft light. All right. Oops. Soft light. So the reason it doesn't work is because we got to be on actual layer, and we're working with smart objects. So that's kind of the reason I don't use it a lot. So kind of trap me there in a the corner. So that's if we were working on a, a layer that was not a smart object, it would work directly on the pixels, which, as we know, is not the greatest thing in the world. So that's one of the reasons I don't typically use the burn and dodge tools because you need actual pixels for that to take effect. So that's why I go into um, a new layer, and I typically will use the soft white layer, which most of us have done already. So this will be the burn and dodge. 
and when I do this soft light layer, I fill it with a 50% gray. And if you recall, everything that is at 50% is normal. If you want to go brighter, you go above 50%. Darker, you go below 50%. So here I'm going to go to 26%, and this is what I'm looking at, this B brightness. So now if I come in here, and let's say I want to take this part of his hair and make it a little bit darker in here. I can, oh, let me go back to my brush. I can go in and make it dark in there. So this is kind of a manual way of adding depth and pushing the shadows down. All right, so I can darken this up here. This is a series of clicks that are happening. And then if I want to make it brighter, I can just go and I can go above 50. I'll go about even 77%. And I'm going to try and, again, reinforce these kind of highlights, these brighter spots. What that is going to do is give me a little bit of um, texture. Like, I don't, not texture, but a little bit of a push and pull of these. And we can always adjust this later. This is what I've been doing. I'm going to hold down Option and, and highlight this here. So that's what I did to push and pull these textures. Um, so you can see that there. That's a little too bright, so I'm going to pull those back. It looks like he's got you know a little gray <laughs> spots there. So what I'll do is I'll go back in, and maybe I'll bring those down to about 64 65%. That way... It won't look so out of place. But that's the beauty of it. doing it in this particular fashion is that it's not permanent. You can always go back and change it if you make a mistake. And if you if you guys know anything thus far, you know you've made some mistakes when you were editing. Um, and to get it back to normal, we can go right back down to 50%. And you can brush that right in. So now it looks something like that. So it's a little bit more managed. And if you really didn't like the effects of this, you could delete it or you can drop the opacity of it too. But I like to have a little bit of texture in there, a little bit of depth. So zoom back out. Drop it down a little bit more. There we go. Um, another thing I could do uh, is creating another burn and dodge layer. And this time I'll work specifically on the uniform to try and manage this as well. Um, let's see. Uniform burn and dodge. And this will be the last one before I let you guys go and work on your own. And I'll post this to our classroom. And what I'll do here is, oops, I forgot to do soft light. And what I'm going to do here, same thing. I'm just going to take these tones, drop them below 50. And I'm going to push and pull these highlights and shadows a little bit to kind of create more um, depth. That's the super important part, trying to create the illusion of depth. And actually, I might go a little bit more. And how we do that, if you've ever taken a drawing class, you understand having something that's, or even anything in which you are creating a design control and contrast is really important. That's how you force the eye to go where you want it to go. So now I'm going to come back with the highlights, about 64. Let's see what that looks like and put it right here. Now this might be going a little bit too much, but we can pull it back. Maybe down here, get the wolf going a little bit. All right. So now if we look at this one, uh, you can kind of see there's a drawing, a little bit of a hair drawing there. So each of these pieces are broken apart, okay? All right, and so that's what I want you guys to get to at some point here is um, end up with something similar to this. And where we started was way back here. All right, so I'll, I'll hit save, command S here. 
We'll save it back to Lightroom and you can see the differences there. So I have, all right, let's see, this is the this one here and All right, you see the difference? Those two files there, that's where it started, that's where we ended. All right, it's a combination of light. What's that? What difference? Oh, I'm gonna kick you in your face. <laughs>